So today we'll be going over some high level concepts that were recently covered during the August 29th training session that you may have seen with my colleague, Melissa Keene. In addition to those items, we will also cover some valuable SSP employer resources and we'll then conduct a more detailed defined contribution training. So we have a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and get started. First step, let's go over the TRS SSP employer resources that are available out on our website. Our website, which I have up here on our screen, is www.trsil.org. So to get to where the SSP programs page is, uh, we will go ahead and use the employers link up here at the top. And then we will go down and we will click on the SSP, the TRS SSP or the Supplemental, Supplemental Savings Plan. And we're gonna start off by going to the SSP employer information. Now there's also a FAQ link we're going to cover that a little later, but first we're going to go to the SSP employer information link. This is the TRS SSP employer resources website. I would like to highlight a couple of items that I'm sure you will find very useful. Under the resources heading, you'll see down here, you'll find links to several resources, resources which also include our trainings. The training that Melissa conducted back on August 29th is the first bullet point. Be sure to check that out if you haven't done so already. Also under resources, you'll find the SSP member education kit, which gives you additional links to the new hire flyer, the plan highlights, the SSP poster, and also the local rep flyer. So we'll go ahead and click into that. And this is the email that was actually sent a while back. And down here at the bottom, you'll see the new kit, the new hire kit, the SSP poster, and the local reps. Be sure to take that SSP poster and hang it up um, where your district allows. It's got a lot of great information on it. When we go back to the resources section of the website, you'll also find the links to the new hire flyer. This flyer is a great resource for your employees. It not only provides information about the SSP, but it also gives some high level information about the TRS defined benefit plan as well. We suggest that all new employees receive a copy of the new hire flyer during the onboarding process. Moving on down the website, you'll notice that there's a list of employer bulletins. Oops. And they're the employer bulletins for reference. You'll find that the most valuable employer bulletins are located in this place. Under the employer bulletins, you'll see that there's some associated files. And that's one of my favorite sections of our website because these are the most important documents that we have about the plan. This is where you can find items such as the SSP definition of compensation, the summary plan description, and even the plan highlights. So now let's go all the way back up to the top of the page and we'll look at the menu in the left hand side. This is where you're going to find your frequently asked questions about the SSP. I just wanna call out that there are a lot of FAQs listed on here, 19 in fact, but a lot of them um, are about automatic enrollment. So I wanna go over some of those, um, very high level, very quick. You guys can go back out here and read them um, word for word later if you'd like to. But for right now, let's go over starting at number four. So number four talks about, um, explains to us that to be eligible for the plan, you have to be a full-time or part-time contractual employee to be eligible for the um, SSP. Number five tells us that the SSP is optional for all employees, regardless if they're automatically enrolled or not. Number six talks about who is eligible for automatic enrollment. And just as a reminder, employees who are first enrolled in a full-time or part-time contractual TRS covered position and who started on or after January 1 of 23 will automatically be, in, be automatically enrolled in the SSP. 
Moving on to number seven, this tells us that when someone is automatically enrolled, 3% of the employee's pre-tax compensation will be withheld on payroll. Number eight, it's kind of a big one. Um, number eight tells us how employees are notified if they are eligible to enroll or if they will be automatically enrolled. So when you report a new employee's uh, defined benefit or DB in the Gemini employer portal, which is after their first paycheck, their information is sent to VOIA and their automatic enrollment status is determined at that time. Okay, moving on to number nine. Number nine explains to us how eligible employees can enroll or opt out of the SSP, which can be done if the employee, um, I'm sorry, it can be done by the employee if they log on to the participant website at trsilssp.voya.com, or they can speak with a VOIA customer service associate over the phone, and that phone number is 844-877-4572. Um, number 10, Number 10 explains that the S, explains the SSP deferrals report, which we'll go over in a, a, quite a bit of detail here in a few minutes. But in a nutshell, this document is your resource document when it comes to the SSP. You should only take deferrals if an employee is on your report. And if they are on the report, you must take those deferrals on payroll. And next up is number 11. And number 11 goes over what happens if an employee wants to opt out, but contributions have already started on payroll. This is important because there are employees who do not wish to participate in the SSP, but they forgot or failed to opt out before their automatic enrollment effective date. So in that case, they can request what we call a permissible withdrawal, which is a withdrawal of contributions made to their account plus or minus any gains or losses, of course. Um, the permissible withdrawal request has to be completed within 90 days of the initial contribution to their SSP account. So should they choose to take a permissible withdrawal, their contribution rate will be changed to 0%, and then their cancellation is going to appear on your district's SSP deferrals report. So before we move on to the reporting training, I would like to open it up for a few minutes to see if anybody has any general SSP questions about any of the material that I've covered so far. Please hold your specific reporting questions until after the reporting portion of the training, which is next. And I'm not seeing any questions. Melissa, do you see any? I am not seeing any questions right now. Okay. So in that case, we'll go ahead and move on. I'm going to stop sharing so I can um, go ahead and bring up my PowerPoint presentation. So if you attended our reporting training last fall, you'll remember that we offered a live step-by-step -step demonstration on how to process your district's defined contribution report. This video will be available out on our TRS SSP employer website for you to review if you need more of a step-by-step -step tutorial. Today, however, I will be stepping you through a few slides that accurately explain how to process your district's defined contribution report, otherwise known as a DC report, in the Gemini employer portal. Throughout the portion of the training, this portion of the training, you may encounter names and examples of scenarios that could include personalized information. Please note that all names and information used in this training is fictional and has been created for the sole purpose of this training, and any resemblance to any real people or individuals is purely coincidental. First up is our agenda. Today we will learn the differences between the DB and DC reporting, then we will go over the SSP contributions reporting process, then we'll learn more about reporting tips and tricks. And finally, you'll be given the opportunity to ask your SSP DC reporting questions during the Q&A. So why is defined contribution reporting so important? The supplemental savings plan is an optional savings plan that allows employees to dedicate a portion of every paycheck to a 457B deferred compensation plan, which is administered by FOIA Financial. This plan helps the employee supplement their existing TRS pension. 
Before the funds can be deposited into an employee's account, their employer must submit the associated defined contribution in the Gemini employer portal. When a DC report is submitted as close to the employee's payday as possible, this allows Boya to invest the funds as the employee intended. As the employer, your role is to accurately and timely process and remit SSP contributions in accordance with TRS guidance. Employers should always review the most recent SSP deferrals report prior to each payroll to ensure contributions are withheld in accordance with the member's SSP elections. This means that all SSP contributions withheld on payroll should be reported as soon as administratively possible after being withheld from payroll in accordance with 457B and SSP plan rules. First on our agenda is what is the difference between DC defined contribution and DB defined benefit reporting? There are four key differences between the two areas. First, the reporting cycle for DC is based on calendar year. This is really important, especially when you are monitoring your employee's contribution limits for the year. If you would like more information on contribution limitations, you can refer to the TRS SSP employer website, or you can refer to Melissa's recent overview training, which is also out on our website. On the DB side, the reporting cycle is by fiscal year. The next key difference is the due date. On the DC side, we expect contributions to be submitted in the Gemini employer portal as close to the payday as possible and as soon as administratively possible. For defined benefit, however, you must submit those payments for your DB reports no later than the 10th of the following month. The handling of summer payrolls is also different for the DC and the DB. On the DC side, we expect you to submit payment for these pay dates when they are paid to the employee. On the DB side, your deadline is on July 10th. And finally, the contact information is also different for DC and DB. For defined contribution, the best way to reach us in the SSP department is via email at ssp at trsil.org. We also have our brand new phone system up and running, which is super exciting. The number is displayed above, but it is 888-678-3675, and we are option number three. On the DB side, the phone number is exactly the same, but they are option number one. And if you are trying to reach the accounting department, you can use the exact same phone number again, but they are option number two. Before we dive into the how-to of DC reporting, we need to first look at the TRS SSP deferrals report and understand why it is such an important tool. The SSP deferrals report is a comprehensive report that generates each time your district has an update. The report will generate every time an employee enrolls in the SSP, makes a change to their existing contribution in amount or contribution category, or if an employee cancels their existing deferral. The SSP deferrals report serves as a salary reduction agreement between your employee, TRS, BOYA, and you as the employer. This document is to be used by each district to determine who from your district is currently enrolled in the TRS SSP how much the employee has elected to defer, which contribution category they have selected, and when their elections are effective. It will even tell you if the employee has canceled their election. We want you as the employer to truly understand and appreciate the importance of the deferrals report. If the election is not on this report, then please do not take the deduction on payroll. If the elections are on this report, however, then you must absolutely take the deduction on payroll. We want each district to get in the habit of checking this report every time you process payroll. Pull it before your cutoff date to make sure you have the most accurate information available at your fingertips. One of the most frequently asked questions we have from employers new to the plan is how do we know when there's a new SSP deferrals report for my district? As I mentioned a few minutes ago, if your district has a new enrollment, which includes a new automatic enrollment, a change in contribution amount or type, or cancellation, then a new deferrals report will generate for your district. When a new report generates for your district, your district's Gemini reporting and accounting contacts will receive a notification email. 
Under the TRS logo on this slide, you'll see an example of the email that is sent to the employer's reporting and accounting contacts when there is a change to their current SSP deferrals report. Please take note of the SSP tip. It's a great idea to add the TRS Gemini Messenger email address to your email contacts, which should help prevent those emails from going to your junk mail or spam. If one of our emails makes it to your junk mail or spam, please make sure to mark it not spam or not junk mail so that in the future, the message will be delivered directly to your inbox. Now let's move on to where you should access your district's SSP deferrals report in the Gemini Employer Portal. Although your district's reporting and accounting contacts will receive a notification email when there is an update to your report, it's still a good practice and good idea and strongly encourage that you always check Gemini for a new deferrals report prior to the close of each and every pay period. It's really easy. I've provided the four easy steps in the box to the right. First, click on the services menu in the blue bar at the top of the page, then select TRS reports. And at this point, you'll notice SSP deferrals is one of your options. You'll then be taken to the TRS report screen where your district's deferrals reports are listed with your most recent report date at the top. If you click on the little blue cloud icon on the left, your district's deferrals will download. You'll notice that the SSP tip on this slide reminds us that the most recent SSP deferrals report will always be at the top of the list. Before we dive into what the TRS SSP deferrals report looks like, let's first talk about the notable details of this report. First, the date is in the upper right-hand corner of the report. The legend is located on the first page and it displays the contribution codes and description of each. You'll also find member information such as the enrollee's name, date of birth, and the last four digits of their social security number. Also on the report, you'll find contribution effective dates as well as contribution amounts and even the contribution category. You'll also see if a member has been identified as automatic enrollment or if they have met their contribution limit for the year. Finally, the deferrals will always be grouped. You will notice an area for changes to contribution amounts or categories, plus those items that are new, canceled, and existing. Be sure to note our next SSP tip that says that we should review the SSP deferrals report before the close of each pay period cycle to ensure that all deferrals are withheld correctly. Please look at this example of an SSP deferrals report. You'll notice that the legend and the date are both circled in red. There are, also, there are also little red arrows indicating where you can find member information, such as the last four digits of the social security number, name, and date of birth. The contribution effective date, the contribution category, and contribution amount columns have red boxes around them. And then in the columns to the right of those, you'll see two columns marked in blue. And this is where you will find the notations of those employees who have been identified as automatically enrolled, as well as those who have met their contribution limit. If someone has met the contribution limit or if they have been identified as automatically enrolled, they will have a yes in that column next to their name. I've also starred the headers of each section of the report that displays any changes, new deferrals, or any existing deferrals. And on a side note, if someone has made a cancellation, there will also be a group for those individuals. Next, I'd like to review how to download an SSP deferrals report. There are two easy ways to download the report. Your easiest option is to simply go to the homepage of the Gemini Employer Portal and click the quick link that says SSP deferrals report. You may also use the services menu if you'd like and select SSP deferrals. Assuming you would like to download the PDF version of the SSP deferrals report, you'll be taken to this screen. This is true regardless of whether you use the quick link or the services menu option. All your district's TRS SSP deferrals reports will be located here with the most recent report at the top of the list. Notice the SSP tip that reminds us of this. Once the report is selected from the list of reports on the prior page, your report will appear. At this point, you may simply view it, print it, 
or you may save it down as a PDF to your computer if you wish. You may either print or save by using the appropriate icons that are in your browser. We also have a new option, which is the on-demand SSP deferrals CSV, which will bring your report up as a CSV document. The CSV version contains the same information that is included on the most recent PDF version of the SSP deferrals report. If there are no members enrolled in the SSP, the report will generate indicating no deferrals exist. The report will be downloaded downloaded to the user's computer and will be named SSP deferrals report.csv. Now it's time to process the defined contribution report. When reporting your district's TRS SSP defined contribution report, you have two reporting methods to choose from. The first is the replication method or data entry method. The other option is the file upload method. Your district's DC reporting method will default to the same method as your defined benefit reporting, unless you notify our staff and request to change your method of reporting for DC. It's fair to mention that you can have different reporting methods for your DB and DC. If replication is easier for you to use, the re for you to, use to report your district's DC, that is perfectly acceptable. Now let's talk about how to start a new report. There are two ways that you can start a new report in the Gemini Employer Portal. First, you may select new report from the reporting drop-down menu. The other option, which is honestly the easiest, is to simply select new payroll report that is linked next to the payroll reporting header on the right side of your screen. Now we're gonna talk about the replication reporting method. If your district is using the replication reporting method, you will see this screen. At this point, you will simply click the blue button with the defined contribution box that says proceed to replication. At this point, you will be prompted to select which pay schedule you would like to report on. Once you have made this determination, you will click the appropriate circle in the select column. This should be next to the pay schedule you are selecting. You will now be prompted to select the appropriate pay period that you wish to report. You will, then, you will then notice the create report box that will verify which pay period the information will be replicated from. Remember that replication just means copy or duplicate. Gemini will begin to replicate now. You'll know this is happening because the replicating report screen will pop up. And you'll notice that the green bar will zip all the way to 90% and then it'll seem to stall out. But the truth of the matter is it really is installing out. The last 10% of this process is where all the replication of the data is actually taking place. At this point, you'll notice that your defined contribution report has appeared and now it's time to validate the data contained within the report. I personally like to see all of my records at once. So the first thing that I do is select all in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen so I can view all of the records. To add a record, select the Report Actions button, then click Add Record. Enter your employee's social security number, then select the employee when they appear below. You'll notice that the Add Record button is below the social security box will then activate. Once you click this button, the employee will be added and they will appear to, in your report. You'll wanna go into that record and make any necessary updates. If an item is required, it will be noted with a red asterisk. You must update the pay period begin date, the pay period end date, the pay date, as well as the contribution category, amount of compensation, the contribution amount, and whether or not the employee has employer-defined contributions, employer-defined contributions. On this, please remember that unless your district has opted to participate in the employer matching or employer non-elective contribution options, these amounts would be zero. After your update has been made, you must click the Save button at the bottom of your screen. If you do not have any errors at this point and all of your contributions have been validated, 
you may click the Submit Details button and continue through the Submit Payment step. Once the report totals are verified, click Save and proceed to payment. Once you go through the reporting steps, you will find yourself on the Payment Information screen. You will need to make sure that your totals are correct and then place them in the amount boxes indicated next to the red arrows on the slide. Once the totals have been input, it will be necessary to enter the appropriate date in the authorization date box. Remember that this date will generate when the funds will be withdrawn from your bank account and then make their way to VOIA. It is in best practice to make sure that you are reporting as close to your payday as possible Therefore, this date should also be as close to your payday as possible. Once the authorization date has been entered, you may click the Proceed to Payment button where you will be asked to confirm your payment. Once this has been done, you will be taken to the confirmation screen. The final view of your report is in the confirmation screen. This confirms that your report has been processed successfully you may either save the confirmation to your computer, you can print it um, using your internet browser. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the file upload reporting method. As a refresher, you will either select new payroll report that is linked next to the payroll reporting header on the right side of your screen or use the reporting menu and select new report. If your district uses the file upload reporting method, you will be prompted to upload the file that was generated from your district's payroll system. Once you click on, the sel on select a file box, the pop-up box will appear, which will allow you to choose the file you wish to upload. Once the file is chosen, the upload button will turn to blue and it will be safe for you to click the button and continue. At this point, Jim and I will upload the file and you'll be taken to the upload results screen where you will need to click details. Once you click the details button, you will be taken to your district's upload, uploaded defined contribution report. The rest of the process all the way through the confirmation screen will continue exactly like the replication method. Now, in a perfect world, you would process your report without any errors, right? Well, sometimes mistakes do happen, and I would like to briefly go over some of the errors or otherwise called edits that you may encounter while reporting your district's defined contribution report. The first edit I would like to go over is ER5055. ER5055 generates when a contribution amount that you are reporting does not match your district's SSP deferrals report. In this example, ER5055 is generated because the reported SSP contributions of $225 do not match the member's expected SSP deferral amount of $250 for that reported contribution category. So the bookkeeper in this situation should verify the exact deferral amount that was taken on payroll and if $225 was indeed de deducted on payroll, then $225 is what should be reported in the Gemini employer portal. If $250 was taken on payroll and $225 was a typo, the bookkeeper must correct the contribution amount on their DC report. There are two ways to make the correction on this report. The first option is to use the edit details function. To do this, select the blue down arrow next to the employee's name and select edit details. Once the contribution has been edited, click the save button at the bottom of the screen. To reiterate, please note the deduction must be verified on payroll prior to editing to ensure accurate reporting. The second way to update this record is to use the quick edit feature. Select the blue down arrow next to the employee's name and select quick edit. Once the update has been made, you may now click the save button. If you find that the amount that has been reported exactly matches the payroll deduction, you may certify the warning. 
For example, if the district is making up a missed deferral from a prior pay period and they had to deduct more or less than the elected contribution, ER 5055 will generate. However, in that situation, you may certify the warning. To do this, you will first use the blue down arrow to the left of the employee's name and click edit details. Now, click view more under error resolution, and this will bring up the warning box as pictured. In the warning box, click the blue certify button and then click save at the bottom of the screen. The next edit I would like to discuss is ER4059. ER4059 will generate when there is a discrepancy between the employee's elected contribution category found on the SSP deferrals report and what is actually being reported on your DC report. If the incorrect contribution category was taken on payroll, pre-tax versus Roth, please correct on payroll on a future pay date to ensure proper taxes were taken. The elected contribution category must be reported in the Gemini Employer Portal. As we mentioned before, you may either use the Quick Edit option or the Edit Details option to, to correct this error. Please note that ER4059 is a fatal edit and you will not be allowed to proceed with your report until a correction has been made on your report. In this example, the bookkeeper is using the Quick Edit feature to correct the contribution category. In the next example, the bookkeeper is using the edit details feature to correct the contribution category within the record using the contribution category drop down menu. When opting to use this feature, don't forget to click the save button at the bottom of your screen where the information you just updated will be lost. Another edit I, that could generate is ER4031. ER4031 generates when an employer attempts to report an employee who does not have an active enrollment in the SSP for that particular pay period. It is imperative to remember, if the employee is not on your district's SSP deferrals report, you should not take the deferral on payroll. If the deferral was taken on payroll, it will be necessary for you to refund the deferral to the employee and then delete the deferral from your DC report. Always remember the effective date rule. SSP deferrals should be withheld from the employee's paycheck on the first pay period with a pay period begin date on or after the contribution effective date. I know that's kind of a mouthful, so I will repeat it. The SSP deferrals should always be withheld from your employee's paycheck on the first pay period with a pay period begin date on or after the contribution effective date. And if the member's deferral has been canceled, the deferral should be discontinued on payroll immediately. In the case of ER4031, you will likely have to delete the employee's record from your deferrals report. To delete a record in a report, you'll need to click the blue down arrow next to the employee's name, then use the drop down menu and click the delete button. You will be asked to confirm the selection and once you've confirmed, then the record will be removed. So now it's time for some quick tips. We've included some handy tips for, some, for reference on the next several slides. If you click the TRS logo anywhere within the Gemini Employer Portal, you will be taken back to the home page. The home page is the landing page where you'll find a picture of the TRS building in the background, which looks like this. An easy way to view an in-progress re defined contribution report is to click on the report in the payroll reporting box, which you'll find circled in yellow here. Another tip I'd like to share is whenever you are in your report, you may search for an employee by typing their last name in the search by last name box. In the Gemini Employer Reporting Dashboard, Payroll Reporting Box, you may click the Reporting History to view any previously, re I'm sorry, any previously submitted reports. You will also see that copying a record is a little like deleting a record. 
first you'll click the blue arrow to the left of the employee's name and then select copy from the down the drop down menu then um, update the information within the record the required fields are highlighted here in yellow the ytd report is also an easy way to verify which contributions have reported uh, for your employees in any given calendar year to pull the report you'll want to select services TRS reports, and then year-to-date report. In the pop-up window, you'll want to select the report type, which is defined contributions if you're dealing with the SSP, and then you'll want to click the year type and change that to calendar year, and then select the appropriate calendar year from the drop-down menu. Then click the Save button, and your report will appear. We've also included some additional resources to make the DC reporting process as easy for you as possible. As I mentioned at the start of this training, TRS partners with Voya Financial to offer the TRS Supplemental Savings Plan. As part of the services that Voya offers, we have three local education reps to help educate and answer questions about the SSP. This is a great benefit that is available to your district as well as to your TR TRS member employees. In Northern Illinois, you will find Tanya Coleman, in Western Illinois, as well as the Metro East, you, you'll meet Stacy Russell. And then finally, in Eastern and Southern Illinois, you will find Terry Bailey. Reach out to any of these three individuals to schedule time with them at your district because you definitely won't regret it. As mentioned earlier, all of the links within this presentation are working links and will connect you with additional information. Like I've mentioned a few times this morning, all of our presentations are available on our website. So you can go out there, click on what you need, and then the link will take you directly to additional resources. There are several ways to contact our department with your questions. We're always happy to help our employers any way that we can. So always feel free to use any of these methods to reach out to a member of our team. And on behalf of the TRS SSP team, I'd like to thank you so much for attending our training today. I hope you found this information useful as you move forward with your district's DC reporting. 